Hydroprocessing is a common refinery unit operation and consists of the two extremes of hydrotreating and hydrocracking. The difference is that hydrocracking is a more severe operation because it cracks the feed material into smaller molecules. On the other hand, hydrotreating simply seeks to remove objectionable materials like sulfur without changing the boiling point of the feed material. Hydrocracking is probably the most flexible refinery conversion process. It can process a wide range of feedstocks with conversion levels ranging from mild all the way up to severe. Often it is used to crack a heavy oil into kerosene and diesel material. However, if severe enough, feed material can be cracked all the way down into the naphtha range, which is essentially gasoline. The process shown on the flow sheet is a once through or partial conversion process since the bottoms leave in the fractionator is unconverted material. To achieve more significant conversion, a second reactor train would need to be added. In that arrangement, bottoms from the bottoms of the fractionator is recycled to extinction in a second reactor system. Hydrocracking can be a dangerous process unit because the reaction is very exothermic and can lead to a runaway reaction if not controlled properly. In addition, the process operates at high temperatures and pressures in the presence of hydrogen, a dangerous combination. Hydrocracking consumes a vast quantity of hydrogen. Normally, a separate hydrogen unit must supply the additional hydrogen over and above the hydrogen a reformer can normally provide. The process begins when feed material is combined with hydrogen and heated in a furnace before entering the reactor system. The reactor vessel, and sometimes vessels, contain multiple reaction sections filled with catalyst. Often the first bed in the reactor is a hydrotreating bed that removes nitrogen-based materials that would otherwise poison the hydrocracking catalyst. Hydrogen quenches exist between the beds to cool the temperature of the stream back down before entering the next bed. In fact, these hydrogen quenches are the primary method of preventing runaway reactions from occurring. Reaction conversion is controlled by maintaining weighted average bed temperature, essentially the average temperature throughout the reactor system, by adjusting the combination of feed furnace outlet temperature and the hydrogen quenches. Reactor effluent exchanges heat with reactor feed before entering the high pressure separator. Flash gas is largely hydrogen and is suction along with makeup hydrogen for the recycled gas compressor, a very large reciprocating compressor. Liquid from the separator then enters another separator, the low pressure separator. Two separator stages are required to reduce the horsepower requirements for the recycled gas compressor. Flash like gas leaves the low pressure separator to be cleaned up in a gas processing unit. Low pressure separator drum liquid is reheated in a furnace before being fed to an oil fractionator, very similar to a crude unit or FCC main fractionator. The tower has separate draws for lighter gasoline, naphtha, kerosene, diesel, and bottoms. In addition, there are multiple pump rounds to remove heat at various temperature levels. Fractionator overhead's liquid is further fractionated in a debutanizer that separates out light gasoline from LPG material. 